Bonaire's wild eastern and southern coasts. Strong easterly winds often make them undiveable, hiding their riches. Yet now it's hurricane season. Rotating storm systems driven off the African coast and fueled by warm water reach the Caribbean, drawing the wind out of Bonaire and changing its direction. The west coast becomes more like the east coast as the Bonaire landmass blocks the wind and waves coming from the opposite direction. Here, tropical storm Fiona has dropped winds down as low as 5 miles per hour. The rotating storm causes the winds to come from the northwest and southwest, and the combination makes diving these coastal areas more attainable. Hey guys, welcome back, this is Rich. Yes, it's hurricane season, and this is the best time of year, in my mind, to dive the uh, island. And uh, the reason is, there are parts of the, of the island uh, that are normally unattainable most of the year due to the strong winds, waves, and current. This is when the, uh, the local divers actually go from the west coast more to the east coast to go diving. It's, in, it's incredible and you'll be able to see a reef like it was 20 to 30 years ago because it's been largely untouched by, by humans. This episode is jam-packed. We're gonna be taking you to the extreme southeastern and southern parts of the island. Uh, we're gonna see a reef that is absolutely spectacular, but much different from the west coast in that it has to stand up to these strong winds and waves. Um, and currents uh, on this part of the island. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of very hard corals. We're gonna see sea rods, sea fans, uh, a lot of fish, a lot of uh, areas of where it almost is like you're in an aquarium where you see uh, large hard corals and it just carpeted with fish in, the, in these particular areas. Uh, pillar corals, elkhorn corals. Uh, we're going to be uh, going to the Talisa del Mar wreck. Uh, many of you not have heard of this. This ship actually ran aground north of uh, Willem Storm Lighthouse and um, it basically, the, the sea took it apart. It's, it's littered all over the, the bottom. Uh, we're gonna take you there. Also important to notice about this area, because it doesn't see a lot of humans, the marine life is less wary. And in fact, we're actually gonna see a Cabrera snapper, which are normally very shy, come right up to my dome port to give me a look. We are going to go to see an Elkhorn garden in the south that, um, is seldom seen. Um, a lot of us locals don't talk about this area because it is so pristine and we're going to see it in a hundred feet of visibility. That never happens and we only have the short window to actually see it because uh, the currents are changing in the area and it will get silted out fairly quickly. Uh, this is the area where they thrive. They like surf zones with uh, a lot of waves and a lot of circulation of water and so uh, we're going to see one Elkhorn this Elkhorn we're going to see is three meters high, 10 feet, uh, and maybe a little bigger, and it's, I mean, it's even much wider than that. So let's go through the dive to see where we're going. And by the way, I'm going to be including GPS coordinates of a lot of, of these places that we have marked on the map so that uh, you can find them yourself. We will start by entering just north of the Cargill Salt Pan Inlet Bridge and drift south, exiting close to the Talisa Del Mar wreck. The inlet is marked by this bridge on the East Coast Road. As you can see, the conditions are more favorable to divers. We will then re-enter at the berm just north of the Talisa Del Mar wreck. The top of the berm is well marked by some interesting artwork and exit markers for divers to see from the sea. To the left is our entrance point north of the wreck. To the right, you can see the top of the Talisa Del Mar wreck and farther to the south, Willem Storm Lighthouse and the new radar tower. This pyramid marks the northern edge of the wreck. The Talisa Del Mar is a passenger and cargo vessel built in 1959 by Bodoas Shipyard, Hulgezand, Netherlands, for the Iceland government under the name Herholfer. She had two Alpha diesel engines, weighed 495 tons, and was 49 meters long. She also had the names Little Lil and Abel Fox. 
she ran aground here on June 13th, 1983. From here, we will drift to Willemstorn Lighthouse. Willemstorn is the oldest lighthouse on Bonaire and stands on the southern tip of the island. It was dedicated August 24th, 1938, the date of King William I of the Netherlands, and bears his name. When we exit, we will be just to the left of the lighthouse as viewed from the sea. We will then enter the south coast between Willem Storen and Red Slave in an undisclosed location due to the rare Elkhorn coral formations here. One of the things I want to emphasize is that even though um, it appears like these areas are um, easy to go into this time of year. Nothing could be further from the truth because although the, the entry will be, will be fine, these currents are shifting. And um, you could get caught you could get caught in a current. You better know how to get in and out of the area. The exit may not be so nice and you need to be able to uh, get out of that particular area and you could get some, uh, some injuries getting in and out if you're not used to that type of uh, experience. Um, so what I highly recommend is you go and get yourself a dive guide on the island who will take you to some of these places. And one of the person who I recommend strongly for shore diving on the east coast of Bonaire, and it's actually pretty much anywhere on the island, is, is a man named Bass Toll. He really knows what he's doing. And he knows all the different exit points to get out. He knows where to get in. He knows when to call a dive if it's gonna to be too dangerous you should go go with him. Now, if shore diving is not your thing, then uh, I highly recommend East Coast divers. They don't go uh, this far to the south, but they do go out to Adelac Bay, and they will take you to the White Hole. Uh, they will take you um, to see Turtle City and, and other, other areas in, over there, and uh, they have a great operation. So, um, you know, basically you want to be safe. So get ready for an amazing experience, and well, let's go diving. Drifting this is the story the of two divers who left the corporate world island. and moved to Bonaire There's to live a diver's life by the sea. Many only dream about this life. Our hope is to inspire you through our experiences and stories so that you can live the dream too. This is A Diver's Life. The water and sky, reflection in my eye, and it's true, so true. Elkhorn Coral, the monuments of this mystery coast. Dense marine life covers this reef. Riches hidden much of the year reveal themselves before your eyes. The life is staggering. A schoolmaster. Pillar coral, an arrow crab, coral mounds like this of branching finger and scaled lettuce corals are everywhere.
this huge field of corky sea fingers, a kind of gorgonian, is unique to this area. The coral sea fans and sea rods must endure very rough conditions and they are very hardy. Space is tight as each type of marine life will find any crack or crevice to get anchored in. It doesn't take long before you feel teleported to a fairy tale place. Bernadette pauses to wonder at this beautiful elk horn. Sea fans dance with the surge. Along observes another elk horn. They get bigger. This elk horn is home to blue tang, sergeant majors, and orange spotted filefish. At last, a hawksbill turtle with interesting colors on its carapace. Bob spots a well camouflaged nurse shark. large school of chub. What a dive. Next stop, Talisa Del Mar. of the Talisa Del Mar. It is unclear how she ran aground here. It is suspected either poor navigation or the lighthouse may have been out. The center structure just pokes above the water. Visibility in the surf zone is limited, making filming a challenge. A feeling of sadness 
hovers over you when you swim among the remains of a lost ship. Farther out, we see her remains scattered across the bottom. The forward mast comes into view. Going deeper and it's off to Willem Storen. The sun is out and so are the fish. Doreen spots something in the coral. What could it be? A Kubera snapper pokes its head out for a look. It sees his reflection in the dome port. Magnificent. The current is humming on its way to the tip of Willem Storm. We use the reef structure to block the flow. We are not in a hurry. The reef here is so dense, it's just incredible. Fish often change colors and patterns from juvenile to maturity. Orange spotted filefish come in pairs. Time to see that amazing giant Elkhorn garden. The Elkhorn garden and no current. The water clarity is the best we have ever seen here. It won't last. Currents are shifting. We have to move. Here we go. Green keeps a safe distance from this amazing Elkhorn. Just below this coral field is a huge field of sea fans and sea rods. A red lip blenny, a trumpet fish, a yellow tailed damselfish, a 
cleaner fish. Back to the Elkhorn Coral Garden. This rare coral is so dense. Elkhorn fragments reattach to the bottom and start new Elkhorn. The water is so clear, the surface looks like a blue mirror. Ten minutes in and the currents shift as the light beams dance around this squid. We drift in unison with the surge. It changes color, and suddenly, friends appear. Life grows everywhere around these Elkhorn, which keep getting bigger. This incredible elkhorn is over three meters high. A giant anemone. A bicolor coney a rosy razorfish, a peacock flounder. Bonaire just does not disappoint. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and hit the subscribe button and the bell. It goes a long way to supporting this channel and helps you to know when new content is released. Thank you for watching.